In chapter five, we think about research ethics. So we think about research ethics as not just a one-off process in research, which happens at a particular point during a project, but rather we think about it as, as an ongoing and active process for researchers to engage with throughout all the phases of the research that they do. So this is right from the early stages of thinking about a research focus and research questions, right through the uh, data collection that we do, the way that we analyse the data, and thinking about how it is we write up research, the way that we write what we've done and what audiences we're addressing when we do that. So we don't just want to see ethics as a, a one-off process of um, fill in a form and get an approval to, to move on to the next stage of research, which is very often how ethics can be um, constructed. And for us, that's really quite problematic. What we try to do instead is to introduce readers to some real life examples of ethically problematic research and get readers to, to think a little bit about why these studies are problematic, how they might be done differently to ensure that, that they're done ethically and how they'd be done today if actually they would be done at all. They are Lord Humphrey's study of men who meet with other men in public places to have sex, which was written up in a book called The Tea Room Trade. We look at Zimbardo's prison experiments and we look at Stanley Milgram's work on social obedience. And all of these studies raise some really interesting questions for us about ethics, about what it is we tell research participants, what we do or, or should be allowed to do to participants, and actually when it is okay or not okay to stop or to carry on with research. So Lord Humphrey's study, for example, um, uses covert methods to um, observe the encounters between men in public toilets, men who are meeting up to have sex with each other. And we really raise a question as to whether this is an acceptable thing for sociologists to do. There's absolutely no doubt that the findings from Lord Humphrey's study were incredibly important and really um, shaped early studies of, of sexuality and masculinity in the discipline of sociology. But of course, he didn't tell his participants what he was doing. Um, and whilst participants remained anonymous, actually there was an element of deception there. And so we really question whether that's the right thing to do, given that the outcome and the conclusions of the research were so important. The other issue raised by this study is, of course, the risk to Lord Humphrey's research participants. There was a risk that if he'd been arrested, for example, and told the police that he was a researcher, they might have said, well, let's see your research notes. Um, in which case he would have then uh, really risked revealing the identities of his research participants who were going to these tea rooms, going to these public toilets um, in secret and very much separate from their everyday lives in which they were married, they had children, they had uh, very responsible jobs and it, it would have destroyed their lives to, to have been discovered um, meeting up with other men in public places for sex. So in using these covert methods and not informing participants of what he was doing, um, this approach really represented a significant risk to the people that he was studying. A more contemporary piece of ethnography that, that we look at in the chapter is Alice Goffman's book On the Run. And for this book, she spent six years living in a poor black community in West Philadelphia and really observed the ways in which members of this community were trapped in repeated cycles of poverty, violence and crime and, and the extent of the police surveillance and brutality that existed in these um, communities. And whilst the study is incredibly interesting, it does raise a number of ethical challenges, particularly at the risk of going native which means when researchers uh, become so immersed in the field that they're looking at, they lose their objectivity and they lose the distance that researchers have to try and maintain between themselves and their research uh, participants. What we would like you to do in this chapter and to take from this chapter is the idea that there are no rights and wrongs when we talk about ethics. There is no one right ethical way to do research and one wrong unethical way to do research. Actually, there are all sorts of ongoing and active decisions to be made. And we really want you to engage with those kind of questions and think through the, the, the specific context of individual research projects and what is the, the, the best or the most ethical thing to do given the particular research that you're interested in.